and the closer she gets to us, the better we get to know her. We so appreciate reading uh, Marge's books, having Marge magic powers in, in, our, in our community, and we're so delighted to know that she's going to be coming more often because she's going to be closer here. And so we thank you so much for wanting to talk to us. And she's going to be talking about mindless chatter. I might have, might have talked a little bit myself in our meditation about that mindless chatter. But she's going to talk about the yada, yada, yada. And so I'm excited to hear that. So please welcome Marge Magic Pops. Hi. 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 She has a light voice. Hello. Hello. I, I have been accused that I speak too slowly, so I'm going to put this microphone right on my chin. <laughs> so if any of you complain and I'm too loud, it's too bad. <laughs> I'm really excited about being here today. Uh, but first I want to tell you, to the people that know me, my name is Magic Powers. For the people who don't know me, my name is Magic Powers. <laughs> I love to play with that. Uh, I want to thank Keith very much for putting together this creative cartoon, which kind of explains what I'm going to be talking about. And also, Dottie and you sharing uh, that there's going to be um, a, a workshop uh, about Ebert. Okay. It's very similar to what I'm going to be talking about today. So you guys are getting a double whammy. <laughs> um, the reason I'm here is I was here about two or three months ago listening to a guest speaker. And one of you guys raised your hand and said, how do you get rid of this? Chatter, 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 yada, 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 that goes on in your head all the time. Sometimes it just drives you crazy. Da, 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 da. And I was sitting in the audience, I said, oh my goodness, I just finished a book called Mindless Chatter. These people have got to hear about this because it works. I'm going to show you today how you create, reclaim your power by watching your thoughts and how to change the thoughts so you can get back to who you really are. And this is all about you, each one of you individually. So you're finally going to be able to have the power to stop and use the tools I'm going to give you today to have the life that you really want. And it's cotton pick and exciting. I was going to swear but that's not appropriate. <laughs> so. I'm going to give you a little idea about what I'm going to be speaking about, and then we're going to go through an exercise that will help you grok it. Anybody ever hear that word grok? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, will you so, explain it? Pardon? Will you explain it for those who haven't? Yes. Explain, it's written by, a, written by a person in the 70s who wrote a book. It was a science, science fiction movie. And whenever he understood something, I really knew it, he would use the word grok and said, I got it. Keith and I use that all the time. So, there are three constant companion resources that are involved in the story of running your life. And each has a job to do. I will show you the six steps it takes to take back control and reclaim your life in just a minute here. But first I have to tell you what they are. Number one, the first companion resource is to remember to connect with the high spirit. Some people call it inner spirit, some people just call it spirit, some people call it spirit guide, some people call it God, some people call it 
the universe. It doesn't really matter. What matters is you pick who you think your high spirit is. And your high spirit's job is to protect you at all times. It always knows the truth for you, and it's always at your back. You can depend on it. Lots of times we forget that our higher spirit is with us, because we all get muddled up in stuff. And we forget. In this case, I'm going to show you how not to forget your higher spirit, and know that it will always be at your back. The second companion resource is what I call the wall of meaning. The difference between human beings and animals is that human beings have in their mind what I call the wall of meaning. Some people call it the wall of shame. And on this wall is written all of your belief systems, all of your experiences in life that you use to make decisions in your life. So what you've done on your wall manifests in your life. Uh, it can ruin your soul. It can ruin your, the wall, what's written on your wall can, can uh, affect, of, affect of your, your self-esteem. It, it, it provides you with a victim mindset and how you view the world and what happens in your world. And you don't even know it's there. For instance, from your unconscious beliefs that are written on the wall, you might hear statements like this. Life is not fair. Are you doing it right? You are not good enough. You are not enough. You might get hurt. Don't take any chances. You are too young, too old, too fat, too skinny, whatever. You do not deserve to be loved. You don't have enough education. You'll never be able to do that. Everything you touch turns to crap. That's on my wall. Can you hear me? Yeah. Who do you think you are? Does anybody, any of those phrases resonate with any of you? Let me see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, my dad used to say to me, everything you touch turns to crap. And so therefore, what I did is I created in my life a whole ton of crap so my father would love me. But I didn't know that. So I'm going to show you how to change all that. These phrases that you may relate to, you may hear your own phrases. I'm going to show you how you can find them. Third companion resource is what I call your tyrant. Some people call them devil. Some people call them uh, ty uh, 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 what they call them? Uh, board of directors, the gremlins, the dragons. I have a client who calls them the beasts. And so what, that, what their job is to totally support what's written on the wall. And you hear it all day long. You are too fat. You are too skinny. You are not smart enough. What am I going to do if that person does this? What am I going to do if that person does that? And you get caught every minute. You don't. You, you hear the voices, but you don't hear them. It's like, where did I get that from? Where did I get that from? So we are not in control. Has anybody ever felt that they're not in control of their lives? Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey, until I was two years old with God, and I finally realized, <laughs> oh, I do have choices. <laughs> So the tyrants want you to be fearful by supporting all those negative statements on the wall. They want to convince you to waste time by reliving the past. The past is not here, guys. Sorry. They want you to worry constantly about the future. What am I going to do about that? What am I going to do about that? How am I going to pay the phone bill? Stuff like that. And that just gets you all tensed up. They want to, you to control your life and thinking for wanting you to always be afraid of just about everything in the world. Most of us are scared down to our toes. And we don't know how to fix that. I can show you how to fix that. Greg could probably show you how to fix that. <laughs> E-birds? E e e yes, it? yes, yes. They want to tell you to constantly be fearful of everything and do not trust. Anybody. How 
do it on China trip. That's very scary. I mean, the only thing I would say to be careful of is watch both ways when you cross the street. Right. Mm -hmm. So, the problem with this mindless chatter, yada, 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 they build up and manifest in your life as if it's some kind of a hex. And I know there have been times in my life when I've had problems, I've felt a cotton pick and hex in my life. Mm -hmm. What am I doing wrong? That's a tyrant. Okay. So, in order to stop the power of your mindless chatter that's over you, you need to learn how to stop that conscious chatter, have it in your head, and get rid of its good, and I will show you how to do this a bit later. That sounds like I'm coming up and down in my... Am I coming across okay? Yeah. Then you, oh, okay. No, Keith gives me the high sign, I'm okay. <laughs> right on. Okay, so because this process is a bit complicated, let me read you a poem I wrote, which I love. Uh, I'd like to brag a little bit. Sure. It's to help you understand and explain exactly what I'm talking about. The poem is called Mindless Chatter. Do you ever feel your mind is going to pop and chatter with too much infested head talking and clueless, mindless chatter? Your many voices inside can drive you nuts and be a noisy disaster. You wonder what does it mean, those crazy, useless banter? The voices say you can't do this or that so loud you think it is the deal. Your imagination builds up scary thoughts you actually think are real. You hear your tyrants or whatever you want to call them say, you'll never get that job and stuck you'll always stay. You're not good enough to have what you want, not on any day. You don't deserve it either, you'll never get to play. Be careful or people will hurt you and you'll always have to pay. You're really very stupid and you'll never find another way. And besides, you never even make it through another damn day. This crazy litany takes control and constantly goes on and never really stops. You think sometimes you're going nuts and your mind will just go pop. You can view these gremlins taking over as tragic and allow them to be your master or reclaim your own power where they don't make any sense at all or even matter. The that kick? So, stop, look, choose, and then take over. This time, you'll be the magical trickster. Send them away in a nice vacation where none of them can hurt you or ever matter. So anybody can relate to this poem? Yeah. Does anybody ever feel they don't know where to go to get the answers for themselves? Yeah. For me, for a long time, I walked around and circled in confusion. But I was cute. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> so here they are, the six easy steps to get control of your life, stop the mindless chatter, reclaim your power, and finally be free. I'm excited. So, please do this exercise with me. You can close your eyes if you wish, or you can leave them open, but pay attention to what I'm sharing here. I want you to stop and be here now. Relax, pay attention, and focus. Feel your feet on the floor and your positive energy coming slowly up your body. Get in touch with your high spirit. Take your time. Step two. Imagine that your high spirit is creating protection around you. Perhaps you can see it as a white light all around you, or maybe a thick transparent cylinder circling around and protecting you, or some other visual process that works for you related to spirit. With this new tool of useful awareness, all of a sudden I get thirsty and lost my track of thought. <laughs> Thanks for the water, Keith. You're okay. Uh, with this new tool of useful awareness, all the negative energies will always bounce off. Understand that the messages from the world of meaning and tyrants will never be able to penetrate, hurt, or control you again. Can you see where you can have the power to stop that? Yeah. Continue to stay in the moment. 
Get in touch with your high spirit. Take a time and breathe. Imagine, what does your high spirit look like? Be very specific in describing it. Does it remind you of something you've seen before to give you a sense of comfort? By paying attention to your knowledge about the six-step process of having the high spirit close by and paying attention to it, you will know intuitively what is actually really true and best for you at all times because the spirit always knows. And if you're in connection with it, you will always know too. It'll be easier if you make better educated decisions. You'll feel at peace, or I have anyway. So when you're in touch with spirit, surrounded by white light or that transparent cylinder or whatever you visualize that works for you, these negative energies in the world, in your head, on your well of meaning, always just bounce off you and protect you from all the craziness. I know that probably hasn't been one of us in this room that doesn't feel crazy one time or another. What is going on? This, can you use this, Paul? By the way, this is my son, Paul. He came especially to his mommy's talk. And, uh, and he even brought me flowers. Isn't that awesome? So, keep these tools that remember to connect to make room with your high spirit to always be at your back so you connect with who you are and reclaim your power and stop that mind constant chatter, yada, yada, yada. So once you get comfortable with the above, relax and imagine you're floating up over your high spirit and slipping inside it. You are now looking out at the world from your spirit's knowing eyes. You will shift your perceptions and notice that everything looks a lot different in your world from now on, and you will feel grounded. Fook. I don't know how to spell fook, by the way. Okay. Deal with it. <laughs> so, you will feel safer and more confident, and you make your own daily life's decision and live in a better place inside you. Once you are aware of how to get in touch with your high spirit, the tech technique, you can always feel safe from the dark negative energies that show up in your world and initially came from your world of meaning and your tyrants. Step three, imagine what I call the wall of meaning in your head. Get a real, take it out of your head and look at it. Get a real sense of where it's located. Is it right in front of you? Can you see it? What color is your wall? Is it a white board? Is it a black board? Is it a brick wall? Is it close up? Is it to the side? What size is it? What does it look like? Is it far away? Notice too that all the writing and the messages on your wall are written in chalk. Or a sharpie, if it's a white board. Is it writing in color? Is it black or white? Is it cursive? Is it printed? It's very important that you really visualize it, get in touch with it, because you become more familiar with it. Uh, because it's very easy to have that just drop out of your life. Now, find a statement. This is your exercise. Written on your wall of meaning that makes you feel stuck or uncomfortable about some situation that is not working for you anymore. Do you have one that's repetitive all the time? Uh, sometimes in the past, my would be, you can't do that. You're not good enough. Uh, am I doing it right? Am I doing it right? My life is all about, am I doing it right? Until finally, I drove by myself crazy with stress. Because I was like this little mouse on that little turning thing that that, I was just doing that. Uh, later on, if anyone wants to know, I'll tell you how to get, get rid of that. So, now step, so have you all gotten pretty much where your wall is and where it's located? Whether it's black or white, well, that's good, because it's important. You may want to share some of this later. You may want to contact me for a quick phone call or, what the heck are you talking about, Marge? Yeah. And I'll say, well, let me tell you my experience. So. Imagine, yeah, okay, so find the statement that you hear a lot 
And like I said, mine used to be, and we're doing it right. And I was looking, see it, are you seeing it on the wall? Walk up to your high spirit and ask it, is this statement really true for me that's on the wall of meaning? It says, for example, am I doing it right? And the spirit looks at you with so much love. It really touches you because you know it's on your side. And the spirit says, what do you think? I think it's not true. So you go, oh my goodness, it really, really isn't true. It's just stuff that was written on my wall. Oh my God, and you can really, you can really get excited about this because you don't have to have it anymore because the spirit will give you a, an eraser or a piece of chalk or a sharpie or whatever coat you wall in and say, why don't you replace it with an alternative message? And for me, with that statement, is my, my doing it right would be, hmm, I know what I can change it to. How can this be a fun and learning experience? All of a sudden, poof, that doing it right went away. Like it never came back. And I felt so much freer and much more confident. Now that sometimes I felt even cocky. <laughs> And another thing that was important to me learning how to transfer to an alternative message, my confidence really changed. I looked at the world differently. I felt like I was in control. You hear that, Paul? Okay. Some of the, exam some of the examples on your wall could be, just to give you a feel, you can't do this, you can't do that. You know, replacement statement and antidote could be, I am in charge of my life and I am free. Another one could be, I am too tall, too fat, too dumb. The replacement antidote could be, I am worthwhile and I am special. The old negative statement could be, I am afraid and I'm not good enough. Replacement could be, I can do anything I set my mind to. So it's almost like, you talk yourself unconsciously into these negative statements. They don't have to be there anymore. They're gone. And you can say, that is not true. And it's not true. Because you're consciously thinking about these. And you're finally taking control. And you have back your cotton picking power. Which we all gave up a long time ago. Me too. So, I could read you more questions and alternatives, but I think you guys got it. So it's obvious that if you change your statements from negative to powerful positive antidote statement on the wall of meaning, what happens is that you now finally have control and know your own truth and can change what is fictitiously written on your wall and not working for you anymore. Freedom! Yay! Step five, the tyrant. To make the situation even worse, you also have to deal with your tyrants, the ones that give you the verbal chatter. There could be one, two, or many more. Always partner, they always partner and cooperate with you all me as its loyal, dedicated, and relentless messengers. Your tyrants are your inner bullies. The continuous, subconscious, abusive narrators in your head who valiantly and relentlessly validate and support what is written on your wall. The tyrants exist vicariously through the wall of meaning statements and use your wall as a guide to, to control you and your life. I don't know about you guys, but me no like control. Right. <laughs> um, they project and tell you who and how you are and define and interpret your very every experience, mostly with a negative viewpoint. Think, what statements do the tyrants usually say to you? What do you hear all the time? What messages from your wall of meeting are they using that make you feel stuck or uncomfortable about some situation that is not working for you anymore? It does not have to be that way. And can you imagine how the freedom, how much freedom you feel from that? Boy, they. <laughs> so 
So, ask yourself, is this belief working or needed for me in my life? And then check for accuracy with your spirit. Ask yourself, is this really true? What does your spirit answer? As an aside, your wall can also include positive statements from what I call your angels or helpers. You can keep them on your walls if you're working for you, like the angels and the helpers can say things like, look both ways before you cross the street. They're good to have. So, you know, you look and see what is working for me here, what is not working for me here. Hang in, I'm almost finished. So, the thing to do is to get rid of your tyrants. Now, how are you going to do that? Well, I've had my clients sometimes do several of these things, and you can pick what you want or create your own. One of them just turned their volume down. Quiet. In there. One of them, they subdue them in some way. Send my vacation, they'll leave you alone. But notice how quiet it gets in your head. I had one client send her tyrant to Ireland to drink green tea and <laughs> smash to party and have a good time. They left her alone. <laughs> I, had, I, I myself took my tyrant, put him in the bus, drove up this whiny mountain. Remember, this is your imagination. You do anything you want. I couldn't kill them because I can't kill things. I can't even kill them. And, but I, in my imagination, I got out of the bus at the top of the mountain, and I said goodbye to them all, and I pushed the bus off oh, the mountain. All right, <laughs> yay! Oh, woo! And you're quiet in there. So in a way, you're playing a game with yourself, but now you know it's a game. Whereas before, you were playing a game with yourself, and you had no clue. And you went, what is wrong with me? A lot of us have that. Okay, so, what you can do is stop blaming the world. Taking responsibility for your own thoughts. Instead of putting responsibility and the power outside of yourself by blaming the world or something else. My question for all of you people is, how long do you want this to continue? We're going to be dead a long time. Want to have your life the way you want it because you can. Why not create that? If you, if you created your not so good life up to now, you can create it again in a more positive way. So why not climb your wall and climb your tyrant now? Okay. So, I've written another poem that you guys are going to have to bear with me. I'm almost finished. It's called, The Wall of Meaning and Your Tyrant. You know, folks, you can talk yourself into almost anything, and this turns into a belief of what your life ultimately brings. Where does that come from? If you believe you can't lose the extra weight, being fat and uncomfortable will be your ultimate fate. Where does that come from? If you believe you're not smart or even good enough, your life will probably be very hard and much too tough. Where does that come from? If you believe no one will ever accept you or love you truly, no matter your self-help, your hatred will surely bring you cruelty. Where does that come from? If you think someone is judging and making you wrong, you will give away your power and no longer be strong. Where does that come from? If you feel you cannot accomplish a certain challenging feat, no matter what, you'll always be scared and fail defeat. Where does that come from? If you feel you cannot accomplish a certain challenging feat, no matter what, I just read that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. If you think that people do not or will not like you or accept you, no doubt that lying experience will usually happen to you. Like Paul's boss. Right, Paul? If you're consumed with feeling ugly, sickly, and bad, you'll wind up cranky. Why God, me, God, and feeling so sad. 
If you assume you can't control life's awful situation, you'll feel weak or get angry with your imagined violation. And where does that come from? You guys getting bored yet? No. If you complain about the world's crazy news and rigmarole, you'll get caught up with an overwhelming drama and life will take its toll. If you believe you're not enough and feel insecure, your days and life will be like hell to endure. And where does that come from? So, as a gift from me to you, here's a secret message I know and so willing to share. The above suppositions can be reversed. They are illusions. They are not there. So, how do you want it? Do you like your life living in a pit? Why not rewrite yourself out of it by changing the words a bit and get in touch with your own answers and protective inner spirit? After talking about this wall of meaning and time and protective process, I want to share my own very transformation insight in a conversation I had with Keith Smith, my life partner. We both gained the insight that we actually have the power to erase the entire world of meaning and start a whole brand new life. We both got tripped out on that one. And we weren't even on drugs. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic to know that you have the power and we don't have to get caught up in the outside world or listen to what people think about you? Or they don't even know. They, who knows who you are with you? So in closing, I've got to read you this review. I got from a 13-year-old client who read this book. By the way, while I'm reading this, from Keith will hand out uh, some supportive material. And also, we have some books for sale that go into this more in detail. Anyway. I forget how much we're charging for that, Keith. How much is that? How much are the books? Just a minute. i got to read it. E-books are ten dollars each. Hard copies are over uh, fourteen each. Okay, so wait, but this guy, this kid, is thirteen years old, back to the being a football player, starting high school, totally bad self-esteem. His father was very abusive, and I gave this to his mother, who was my client. She, I gave him a book, mindless chatter, and this is what he wrote. I, after I read this poem, I cried for three days. What I liked most about this book was all the information that was going on inside of me. I learned that I can overcome all these obstacles and barriers and find me. By changing my behaviors and stop letting people get the best of me, I know I have the power because it is my choice regardless of the situation. What was most helpful to me was the part about the world of meaning. I can have what I want on my wall. If I don't want the bad thing there, I can get rid of it. I didn't even know this was real until my mom told me about it. And she gave me this book to read. Now, every morning I say to myself, I am smart. I am strong. And I, I can do anything I want to do. This book is useful to me. I give it an A. Yay! Yay. <laughs> I learned it. It's up to me. I have the power inside of me. I learned about the tyrants and how they want to take my power and make me feel bad and make me feel like I'm not good enough. But now I know. I would recommend this book to all my friends then they can understand why they act and feel the way they do. I like all the quizzes in the books too. I see things different now. There are some things I have to work on, but with this book I know I will do it. I can always change my thoughts now that I know I have choices. My favorite poem in the book was Being a Teenager. I think I gave you a copy because I heard some of those things. I liked your book a whole lot. Charles Shaw, 13 years old. Yay! Woo! Anybody have any questions? Can I share anything? I'll I share about your wall. Pardon? I have a question. How did you get to this point? I had a master's certification in neuro-linguistic programming. And some of this, I didn't take it from NLP, but the way they teach you to think, I created it from that. 
Yeah, and it works for me. That's really why it did play the truth. I'm very really selfish. What do you call it? Rational selfishness. Rational selfishness. <laughs> Any question? If you want the book, see Katie has some with him. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions on the flyer, the handouts, I think we have to Thank you very much. Thank you.